Hey, what's up guys? So in my last video where I set up the Ecotang ET8550, I mentioned that I'd be doing another setup video on the Expression XP15000. So the XP15000 is a wide format photo printer that uses six colors and was a replacement for the Artisan 1430 printer. It costs $349 and it prints 13 inches wide. So it's a great alternative to the more expensive Ecotang ET8550 or the Ecotang ET15000. It's also a lot easier to find. At the time I made this video, I was able to find them online from multiple retailers, which is good because we're about to get into those big money holidays like Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. You can also use these printers for DTF transfers, but we're going to be using this printer for sublimation, so let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is take it out of the box and set it up by following the instructions on the start here guide up through step number four. We'll load up the printer with some regular copy paper, and then we'll set up the Wi-Fi on the printer. Okay, to set up the Wi-Fi, we're just from the home screen, we're just going to arrow over to the Wi-Fi setup. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to hit OK on Wi-Fi recommended. Just going to go ahead and hit Start Setup. I'm going to select Wi-Fi Setup Wizard. I'm going to let it search for our network. And uh, after we find our network, we're going to select our network and enter our password. So it's on our network. Gonna select it, we're gonna enter our password here. Okay, after you enter your password and hit start setup, it'll finish setting up. And once it's complete, you can just go ahead and click on dismiss. And then you can go back to the home screen by hitting the home button. And then we'll get our refill cartridges ready. Okay, so with these cartridges, the filling process is, is pretty much straightforward. Um, what you want to do is remove this vent plug here. We'll go ahead and get that out. And then we'll remove the fill plug. All right. So I'm going to take our sublimation ink, this case Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation ink, and then we're going to put about 10 milliliters into the fill hole. Remember, we still got this um, this cap on the bottom of it. We're going to put about 10 milliliters in here slowly. And what will happen is the ink will start to transfer over here to this sponge. So we're just going to leave this here for about... Okay, so we waited a couple minutes and now most of the ink has moved over to the left side of the chamber and soaked into that sponge. So we'll go ahead and add some more ink into the right side of the chamber. All right, so now that a couple more minutes have passed, we'll go ahead and finish topping this thing off so it doesn't look like it's going to fall any further than what it's already done. And we'll get some ink drawn up here. And then we'll finish topping this off. All right, so we finished topping it off. So we'll go ahead and put this fill plug back on it. All right, so that sponge is completely soaked now. And we went ahead and topped off the right-hand side of the cartridge with ink. And now we'll just leave it just like this until it's ready to put inside the printer. Make sure we keep these caps on the bottom. Okay, so once we're set up and we got our cartridges filled and ready to go, we need to go ahead and swap those out. Swap out the original Epson cartridges for the refill cartridges. So we're just going to go simply to... Um, this little ink icon up here. We're gonna click on OK. And then we're gonna go over to replace ink cartridges. And we're gonna click OK again. It's gonna say replace the ink cartridge. And we're gonna click on next. So we'll hit start. And then we'll wait for it to move and get into place so we can change the cartridge out. Okay, so to remove these cartridges from this printer, what we need to do is press on this blue tab here. So we're gonna press that in, and then this cartridge pops up. See, we've taken the cyan cartridge out already. Um, once you take the uh, original cartridge out, um, you're gonna replace it with the refill cartridge. And the only reason I say that, these uh, cartridges, if you look down in there, they have these little screens on it. It's not a nozzle that goes into the cartridge. 
And uh, you can actually leak ink from another cartridge into that screen and you don't want those colors to mix. So as I take one out, I'm gonna replace it with the, uh, with the refill cartridge. So that's out. We'll take this off of here. And um, I'm kind of holding it upside down just so any leak uh, ink doesn't leak out until I'm ready to put it in there. And um, you're gonna place, place it this way. You're gonna angle it to the left at first so that this little uh, notch gets underneath here. And then you're just gonna place it down. Click it down into place. And then we'll do that for the rest of these. Okay, so once we replace the ink cartridges with the refill cartridges, we'll go ahead and click complete it here. I'm just gonna tell you that the ink cartridges not installed correctly. And that's because we don't have the chipless firmware installed. So when you get this message here, do not freak out, it's fine. So we'll just go ahead and keep it on the screen like this for now, and then we'll install the chipless firmware. Okay, so now that we got our refill cartridges installed in the printer, what we need to do now is install the chipless firmware so that the printer will be able to read those. So what we need to do is open up our browser here. We're gonna to go to chiplesssolutions.com. And from their homepage, what we're gonna do is go to download firmware. We're gonna download a couple of files here. We're gonna first download the license.exe utility. And that's gonna to download to my desktop here. So I'm gonna keep that there for now. And then we're gonna scroll down to XP series and keep going down till you get around the bottom, you'll see XP 15,000. We're gonna download the firmware for that. So I'm gonna save that there. All right, so once those files are done downloading, I'm gonna to go to my desktop where they are and here they are here we're going to move those here and what i'm going to do is create a folder so that we can keep everything organized um i also need to let you guys know that this can only be done on a windows pc it can't be done on a mac you can do it on a windows pc and then use it after that on a mac but you can't install the chipless firmware from a mac so we're just going to right click on our desktop here create new we're going to create a new folder and we're just going to call it xp 15,000 chipless. All right, and we're gonna move those into the folder so that we can keep everything organized. So first thing we're gonna do is start off by installing the firmware, the chipless firmware onto the printer. So that's this file down here. Now these are archive files. So they're files that that contain other files inside of them. Um, you can extract everything here, but again, I kind of like to be a little bit more organized here. So we're just gonna create uh, two more folders here. So we're gonna right click, we're gonna click on new folder, and this one's gonna be called firmware. And then we're gonna create another new folder. Right click, new folder again. And this one's gonna be called license. And we're gonna take the license archive file and move it to the license folder that we just created. And we're gonna take this firmware file and move it to the firmware folder that we just created. Now we're gonna start with firmware. So double click there. And we're gonna double click on this archive file. Now I use a program called PZIP and that's gonna do all the extractions of the archive files that we downloaded. If you don't have it, you can download it, it's free. It's P-E-A-Z-I-P. Or you can download a tool called 7-Zip or Renoir, and these are all free archiving uh, programs that'll get these extracted. So once I double click on that, we're just gonna extract into that firmware folder by clicking OK and then it's gonna give us a few files inside of that firmware folder that we just created. We're gonna go back to that chipless folder. This time we're gonna double click license 
and it's going to do the same thing here. We're just going to double click on it and extract and click OK. Now this one's going to extract a another uh, zip file or another archive file called license, but it's going to have a date after it, and that's just the latest update to that file. So we're going to double click on that folder or file and then extract it. And this time it's going to ask for a password. And that password is going to be one, two, three, four, five. We'll click OK. And now it's uh, extracted the license.exe software and a README file attached as well. So at this point, what we need to do is run the firmware or update the firmware, uh, update the printer's firmware by using the chipless firmware that we already that we just installed just downloaded so we'll double click and then we'll click on this file here the epfwupd and then we're going to create uh, click yes here and then it's going to go through a few steps here now we're just going to next here click i agree here click next we're going to click next on step four it's telling you that it has to be done via USB so if you don't have your printer connected to the computer via USB already go ahead and do that now we're gonna click on next and then it's gonna come up here uh, with a few uh, with a couple of um, models but they're the same printer uh, one it's gonna have a connection type of USB the other one is gonna have one of network you can only do this with the one that's connected via USB so go ahead and highlight that. We'll click start. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna proceed with the firmware? And then we're gonna click on yes. And what's gonna happen off screen, the printer's gonna switch from the maintenance screen where it's asking for those printers, or for those cartridges, and then it's gonna start the uh, firmware update. And once it does that, it's gonna pre uh, restart the printer and then come back on and then it's going to hang here from 85 to 99. It looks like it's not going to do anything, and then it's going to stop. Okay, once it gets to 99%, it's going to tell you that the printer's firmware was not updated. You're going to think that it failed, but it's actually fine. As long as the printer restarted and got back to that screen where it's asking you <clears throat> uh, to install the cartridges correctly, and it's blinking, the power button's blinking, you're fine. Um, just go ahead and click on stop at this point. It's going to tell you that the firmware <clears throat> update for the following printers will be canceled. Do you want to cancel it? Just click OK. And then it'll get to this point and then you just click on finish. And now the chipless firmware has been written to the printer, but now it still needs to be activated. So in order to activate it, what we need to do is go back to our chipless uh, uh, folder, uh, XP15000 chip, chipless folder. And then we're going to click on license. And then we're going to right click on license. I always right click on it. You can probably just double click on it. But I always right click and then I click on run as administrator and then I click on yes. All right, so once the program opens up, uh, what you want to do is go over here and click on activate online. And it's going to ask you to input your activation code. If you get to this point, that means that the printer can be, uh, that the uh, chipless firmware can be written to the uh, to the printer so we can go ahead and purchase the activation code now so we go back to uh, chiplessolutions.com go back to our browser and then in the uh, uh, under our model here the XP 15,000 we're gonna click on guide and buy <clears throat> we're gonna scroll down till we get to the activation keys and then right here where it says regular activation keys we're going to click, it's going to add, it's going to say, uh, you can pay by PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, etc. I always pay by PayPal just for obvious reasons. They're a lot more secure. So, uh, you can click here or here, click on the second here, and it's going to take you directly to the checkout. 
So um, you know, put in your billing information here, and then on select the payment method. Again, I always go to the drop down, select PayPal. I enter my PayPal email address. Click that I'm not a robot. Submit the order, and then it's going to um, they'll email you an activation code that we're going to use in this license um, program here. Okay, so they email me my activation code, so I'll go ahead and input that now. I click OK, and what just happened is the printer, I mean, the uh, printer has uh, now been activated with the chipless firmware. So at this point, it's still on that screen that has the um, the error message saying to install the cartridges correctly but all we have to do is turn the printer off and then turn it back on okay after you turn it off and turn it back on the error message should be clear so we can go ahead and click OK here and we're going to copy this recovery code here. Right click in this window here. You can either right click in here and select all, then right click again and, and hit copy. And then we're going to go back to our uh, XP 15,000 chipless for, uh, folder. What we're going to do is create a new text document. We're going to right click in this window and click on new text document we're going to call it activation code and then we're going to double click on it and then we're going to paste that activation code into that document and we're going to save it and then we're going to close it out and that's our activation code so if we ever accidentally update the firmware we can uh, install it again and uh, use this activation code to uh, activate it and we don't have to continuously pay we don't have to pay for it again but it's burnt into that printer so you can't go and swap a printer out and then try to use this activation code it won't work it's per printer so each activation code is for each printer that it's burnt into all right so now we can go back to our license and then we can X out of here and we're done with the chipless firmware install okay so after we got our chipless firmware installed we need to install our driver so we can go to our browser here in the search menu we can type in XP 15,000 it's gonna auto populate and we can just click on the support link it's going to auto populate your operating system here and it's going to recommend that you download the drivers and utility combo package installer but we're just going to click on the drivers and then we're going to download the printer driver here go ahead and save that to my desktop All right, looks like it's done. We'll go to the desktop here, and here's the the driver. We'll double click it, click yes here. We'll let this install here. I'm not gonna set this up as my default printer, so I'm gonna uncheck this here. Click OK. I'm gonna click English here. I'm gonna click Agree here, and click OK. Okay, it looks like it's done installing the driver here. Now. It did it pretty quick because I've already had this printer set up on this computer before. It might come up with some extra dialogue asking you if you want to install it either from a um, on a USB cable or on the network. Depending on how you're setting your printer up, just go ahead and select that and click next and go through the rest of the setup. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and that's going to uh, exit out here. Um, down here, this icon. Uh, showed up and that's just a, uh, the printers icon here in the task menu 
So I'm going to uh, right click on it. And then I'm going to go to printer settings. And here's where I'm going to set up my uh, printing profiles. Okay, so I normally print on legal paper. So what I'm going to do is change my document size to legal. Um, I normally print in landscape here, so I'm going to do that. Um, the paper type uh, normally is uh, premium presentation matte. It's going to be a color profile. Um, up here in the more options tab, we're going to make sure that we mirror the image and turn our high speed printing off. And I'm going to set up the uh, color profile here. So I'm going to click on custom, then I'm going to click on advanced. Um, I like to go to uh, color controls here at the top. I uh, move this to slide bar and I select the Epson Vivid color mode. I'll select two for my cyan, negative uh, 20 for my magenta, and negative 15 for my yellow. This will get me in the ballpark and then I'll uh, adjust these values after I print my color chart out to make sure I'm in the ballpark and get those colors uh, the way I see them on the screen. So I'll click OK here and then I'm just going to go ahead and add the uh, the preset here. And normally I print on A sub paper so I'll go ahead and put that on there. The 120 weight and we're going to make this an Epson Vivid Profile like this and we can go ahead and save it that's going to bring that profile down here into our printing preset so we can close this out and when I go to print I print out of uh, Photoshop and when I go to print I'll just click on this profile here and make my prints that way so I'll click OK and speaking of I'm going to go ahead and go to Photoshop here okay and once Photoshop is open I'm going to go ahead and run a few a uh, few of those pur purge files um, out of the printer and what that's going to do is help get any of the ink that initialized help push that out of the print head and then get all of the uh, sublimation ink flowing through the print head so we'll go ahead and do that now so let me go ahead and open up my um, my purge file here so we got a purge file directly uh, specifically for the uh, XP 15,000 that I made and it's just uh, basically the uh, CMYK um, purge file, but we added the red and the gray onto the top. So click on print. And then we're going to select the printer that we just installed, the XP 15,000. How to find it on here. Okay, here it is. All right. So go to print settings. And we'll select that profile that we created. We'll click OK. All right. So we'll click on print. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to print another one to um, come right behind that one. And that'll just to make sure that all the, uh, the ink is being pushed out. All right, so after we get our purge files printed, we'll go ahead and run a nozzle check and make sure we don't have any broken lines on the printout. Then we'll go ahead and swap our sublimation paper in and we can start doing some sublimation printing. So the first thing I wanna do is print out a color chart here. And this will help me uh, diagnose my colors. I can just uh, type in the values here when it's printed out on the substrate and that'll help me lock in my color so I'll get one of these printed out we'll use that profile that we made earlier and we'll print that out and I'm also gonna print out a couple of license plates that I was working on earlier so we'll go ahead and print out this Ouija board here And we'll start here. We'll go with this one. Uh, 
and we're always clicking this setting that we created earlier so this one's already locked into it I can just hit OK hit print a little lion here the colorful lion here Alright, so we'll print those out, check it out. Alright, so it looks like everything printed out well, no big adjustments needed. So guys, if you're looking to get a wide format printer or a 13-inch wide printer and you're having trouble finding the other models or if they're out of your price range or if you're looking into getting into DTF transfers later, you might want to check out the XP15000. Thanks for checking out the video and until next time guys, good luck and good night.